Hey guys, in my coverage of the history of the Spectre in the Bronze Age, we recently talked about how he's been fighting this new metahuman that emerged as a result of this alien invasion. Now he's going to go up against this threat and become Cyber Spectre, which is this whole other thing we're going to be getting into. Be sure to subscribe to Comic Island for more of these videos and to check out other content featuring all sorts of characters from Marvel, DC, and more. With his new powers, Richard Redditch began using television in order to influence civilians into burning their own money, just for his amusement. Meanwhile, Madame Xanadu was approached by the Spectre, who commented that the ghost had kept his distance from her ever since he and Corrigan had merged into one body. They spoke of this new threat, while nearby, Praxis and Quarrel discovered the body of the man killed by the punk possessed by Richard. When looking into the matter further, a police technician detected the presence of a virus created by Redditch that hampered their investigation. Richard then instigated a robbery by gathering a gang of minions he possessed with a part of his consciousness. As this mind-controlled group robbed an electronics store, the Spectre detected this and managed to travel through the electrical grid into the devices being stolen. He appeared before them in a distorted, wiry form easily subduing those possessed, while leaving Richard shocked that there was something out there which could stop them. Perplexed, the Spectre transformed back into Corrigan's body, and requested that the detective and his agency figure out what was going on. When the police found this gang, including the punk that had killed somebody, Praxis quickly deduced that this wasn't the real serial killer, and Quarrel began to think the real killer was somehow supernatural. Back in his hotel room, Redditch received a delivery of a computer and began a more deadly plan. In a single use of his powers on the internet, Richard was able to access the minds of nearly a million users in America, leading the serial killer to experience an unprecedented surge in power. Back in his office, Corrigan briefed Cryptica Crimes, though without Zorin, who had left on other business, and told them of the Spectre's existence. Though he was vague on the details, he confirmed to the detective agency that he had a connection to this ghostly being, as many of them had come to suspect. Jim explained how the Spectre encountered possessed people around the city, and they would have to pause their investigation into Redditch in order to look into this matter on the Spectre's behalf. Corrigan advocated to the group that they should help the Spectre at this time, reasoning that the ghost had helped everyone at Cryptica Crimes at some point by now and they all owed him this favor. At that time, Pete Quarrel and Praxis arrived at the agency. Talking privately, Pete and Jim told each other what they had learned of recent events, and the Spectre began piecing things together. Everyone agreed to work together, and each set out on individual assignments looking for incidents in the area involving electricity. At which point, Jim transformed into the Spectre, who had some ideas of his own of who he should look into. As for the near million people attacked by Redditch, they all simultaneously fell into a comatose state. Later, Praxis explained to Pete how he once was a detective in Portland, before getting assigned to the serial killer eventually dubbed The Artist. When this killer, still not known to be Redditch by these men, attacked Praxis' niece, he began a relentless hunt for The Artist, resigning and pursuing the killer on his own terms. Hearing news of the mass comatose victims over the radio as he told this story, Praxis began to believe Pete when he said something unusual had happened to the artist. As Cryptica Crimes looked into some of Redditch's early experiments with his new powers and investigated other leads, Redditch began refining his own powers further, killing a number of innocents brutally just to see how he could target specific people. After he meddled with a power transformer, the Spectre discovered this and had his spirit enter the electronic circuitry. Redditch immediately detected this, and so the Spectre was suddenly attacked by beings composed of electricity, created by this new metahuman. The Spectre used his powers to deduce these beings were the souls of those rendered comatose, captured by Redditch during his attack, and made into electronic constructs. Determined not to harm these innocent beings, the Spectre raced off, as he sensed the source of their power at Redditch, and moved to confront the man. Redditch could feel this happening and managed to use his powers to block the Spectre, though the spirit was now able to tell where the metahuman was hiding. 
So the Spectre had Jim use his voice to contact Coral and request help at Richard's location. After doing so, Richard's army caught up with the Spectre, and once again they attacked. Coral and Praxis burst into the hotel room. The two men opened fire, killing Redditch's body. His soul, however, survived and managed to travel out into cyberspace, infecting the very man who was responsible for Richard getting his powers in the first place. Mr. Ran, Creature's superior and the one who wanted to develop the metahuman activation technique, became possessed with Richard's consciousness. Redditch immediately ended any VTech operations dedicated into finding Richard, and sensing this change, the Spectre left cyberspace and encountered Praxis and Quarrel in the real world, who were baffled by Richard's behavior. Turning back into Jim Corrigan, he quickly deduced the body belonged to Redditch and realized all the recent mysteries were connected. Meanwhile, Betty of Cryptica Crimes, who predicted much of this with her psychic abilities, volunteered to inform Richard's wife of the man's apparent death. The Spectre, however, warned Corrigan he could detect the danger was far from over. Somewhere out there, Richard's mind remained intact. However, with the mystery solved, the Spectre felt this was no longer a mortal affair, but required his powers alone. He went to Madame Xanadu and admitted that the creator of the Spectre, known as the Presence or the Voice, had not contacted him since he merged fully with Corrigan, and he required her guidance. Xanadu suggested this may have been because the Spectre was now mortal, or at least more than he had ever been. Fearing Redditch could provoke an apocalypse and that he couldn't stop the metahuman, they both desired to feel one another's touch as humans at least once before the potential end. So the Spectre turned back into Corrigan, who kissed Xanadu on the ghost's behalf. Transforming back into the Spectre, they left, with the superhero stating that Xanadu was the only one he had ever felt any love for. Using Corrigan's voice, the Spectre warned Pete that things weren't over with Richard. The killer, meanwhile, consolidated his power, assassinating key members of VTech while directly tapping into the energies of the million people he had connected to throughout the internet. In an effort to combat this growing power, the Spectre figured out how to absorb the electricity himself. In cyberspace, the Ghost began a fierce battle against Richard's army, while in the real world, Richard, in Rand's body, after agonizing over the matter internally for some time, decided on one final plan to end all of human existence, and attempted to provoke a nuclear war with Russia, which he was easily able to do as VTech had deep ties with the American Department of Defense. In response, Rand's own men turned on him, realizing something was wrong with their boss, and they shot him dead. Once again, Richard's soul survived the attack and he easily moved his consciousness onto the electrical grid. However, he left them unable to stop VTech's computers from continuing their new hacked protocol, and they began to take over American nuclear launch sites around the world. In the electrical grid, the Spectre finally encountered Richard directly, and learned that empowered by a million souls, the serial killer was much stronger than the Spectre in this domain. In a display of force, Redditch began gathering more power from his collected souls. By doing so, he allowed the Spectre to seize some of that power for himself, giving the hero enough strength to overpower and defeat Richard. Redditch fled, leading to a desperate chase with the Spectre having only moments to stop a nuclear apocalypse. Richard went into the real world seeking out his old body, just as Praxis and Quarrel happened to be at the morgue as part of their investigation. In front of the baffled men, Richard emerged, resurrected. However, the Spectre was able to maintain an attack on his soul in cyberspace, while Praxis and Pete burned his body, and together they appeared to destroy Richard once and for all. With the metahuman finally defeated, the nuclear launches were aborted, though in the ensuing conflict, Praxis passed out. Luckily, the Spectre was able to discreetly turn back into Jim Corrigan and revive the investigator. Praxis woke and in front of the two men, reactivated the lights of the morgue, turned off in the earlier struggle. Though both noted the apparent activation of these new powers, much to the shock of Praxis, Quarrel reassured Corrigan that in his time working with this private detective, he learned the man was trustworthy, even if a little odd. In the days that followed, it was learned that most of the Department of Defense was unaware of the metahuman work being conducted at VTech. One surviving government official resigned in protest over everything, but otherwise, even though concerns were made about how the nuclear arsenal was controlled by a single computer network, little changes were made. 
Jamie and the other children possessed by Richard were let off lightly for their crimes, only assigned community service. Later, while Jim, who learned of the human experimentation conducted by Rand, compared the man to Oliver North, the Spectre asked why so many humans considered people like that heroic. Jim stated he did not know, but expressed disdain over the concept of blacks. He believed the world was too small and fragile for more than one banner, leading to this distorted morality the Spectre didn't understand. The ghost took some comfort in the fact that Rand and just about everyone else responsible for Richard's rampage had died as a result of their own actions. Neither were aware of Praxis leaving town, possessed by Richard Redditch. Next up is the Spectre's final stories in the Bronze Age, this big crossover thing with Justice League, and then the final two issues of his solo series. Stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching.